Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Machaba, Moni Moni Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts, in the shadow of the great Blue Hills. We are so delighted and so very honored that you'll join us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. Tell your kids, teachers, principals, and librarians. And please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Himalaya, Ghana, Podcast Addict, Good Pod, wherever you find your podcast. Join us right now from the wonderful state of Iowa. Our guest is here today to celebrate his new children's book. It's called Where Do Animals Go on Vacation? Please welcome to the show, Steve Erickson. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I'm guessing, um, well, I don't know. Do uh, animals go to Iowa on vacation? Uh, I think they're they're all pretty much snowbirds. They pack up and head to Phoenix and, and uh, Florida. <laughs> the intelligent ones do anyway. There so. you go. There you go. So tell us all about this great uh, new kids book. Well, uh, you know, um, it's something that it's kind of on the heels of my first book, which was... Uh, um, a very chilling mystery, which is about what happens inside a refrigerator when you think the doors, when you think the lights off and the uh-huh. doors close. That was a lot of fun. So I thought, you know, I've had this idea in mind actually for 15 years. I think the first sketches I did for this book were at least 15 years ago. And then, but I was working full time as a creative director at an advertising agency. So I had to put them on hold until, uh, I decided to uh, cash it in and retire several years ago. So um, anyway, yeah, it's. I thought in particular, my the first animal I thought of was the one that's first page in the book, a turtle. Turtle's life seemed so boring, just sitting there on a rock, sunning or, uh, you know, plodding along, uh, along the ground. I thought, you know, if, if they could take a vacation, where would they go? So that's the idea of this book, that each animal that I selected, and I took a long time just to decide which animals I would choose, um, each animal goes to some place that is specific to them. Um, so, so <clears throat> again, the turtle, I decided instead of crawling around on the ground all day, he'd want to go up in the mountains, he'd want to stand up, he'd want to go fast which is just the antithesis of what turtles are like every day. So, uh-huh. uh, and the mere fact that he has a built-in uh, shell means he could wipe out and not get hurt. So um, it, it seemed to be a natural. And from there, I thought, again, well, what other animals would, um, you know, find a good place to go vacation, go on vacation? So, you know, there there's a shark and there's... Um, you know, uh, a penguin, lots of different animals. It, it's kind of across the board. Very cool. And, and, you know, the turtle, in addition to having that built-in helmet, um, he, he kind of travels with an RV, so he doesn't have to worry about hotels. There you go. I hadn't thought of it that way. No place, <laughs> a place to stay. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, and the, the thing about it, and I've read this book, so far, I mean, it just came out a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago um, to several grade school classes. And I found the fun part is going from page to page, I will identify what animal's going to come next. And I asked the kids to, well, you know, where do you think the shark would go on vacation? Or, you know, where do you think uh, uh, an armadillo would go on vacation? And they all had great ideas. So, the uh, you know, the, they... Th- they think before we read the page and um, and then they always have you know it's it's they're always surprised and it's they always laugh they think it's fun and um, the fun part too is in one of them um, I actually had the kids read the book I put it on a, a overhead projector and had them read it which I think 
speaks to the value of reading. You know, it's not just me blabbing my story. It, it allows them to uh, individually learn some of the words or, um, and I, each different animal, I had a different kid read and, and they just absolutely loved it. Fantastic. And, you know, what you're talking about, that whole idea of asking kids, what do you think? What do you, that's one of the things that we encourage here in the Reading With Your Kids podcast is while you're reading with your kids is to ask those questions. What do you think is going to come next? Maybe take a picture walk through a book before you even read any of the text and just imagine right. what the story is based on the pictures. Mm-hmm. And right. uh, yeah, yeah. And that's I, I think. It's so valuable for so many reasons. It gets, as you were saying, it gets the kids sharing their imaginations, but it's also asking the kids what they think, what their opinion is, what 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 they they imagine. And as believe it or not, you know, you are your kids' most important person in their lives, and uh, the fact that the most important person in their lives wants to know what they think, wants to know their opinion, I think that's exactly. pretty empowering. Right, right. Well, uh, the book starts off um, asking kids where they would want to go on vacation, you know, and um, kind of gets them thinking there's two little kids with little balloons over their head. And one, the little girl looks like she wants to go to Disney World and the little boy looks like he wants to go kayaking. And the idea then the next is, well, let's find out where animals would want to go. And again, page by page, um, they get to discover where they would go. And the last page is basically, well, have you decided where you would go? What, what would you think, you know, where, where have you really decided you want to go? And then the last very bit is I would like, has a a line that goes, I would like to go to, and that may be something they could leave for their parents. Uh You know, I would like to go to Disney world, or I would like to go to the grand Canyon. Um, It's, it's trying to, build a sense of adventure in kids, which I think, again, uh, any good children's book does have the sense of adventure to it and, and gets them to think about places beyond where they live. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is so important. I I agree. I You know, I have a question. This might be um, a sound a little... Um... I, I don't know what it's going to sound like, but, but go ahead. I we, can take it. No, no, it's not nothing. I, 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 it's kind of in line with what you're talking about. We've, I, I hear a lot of young people talking about being a creative and, you know, and just how wonderful that is. And, um, and I've heard this because I've, I've been doing educational magic shows for, uh, full time for, for the past uh-huh. 35 years. And I've had people come up to me after they've seen, a show where my magic is themed around a certain message. And they've said, wouldn't you like to just do magic for magic and not have to worry about delivering a message? And my response is always, no, I'm spending time with kids and taking them, right. taking them out of the classroom. So I wanted to have uh, a purpose. Um, but what about that? You're somebody who is has been a creative director um, for many years. And so your creativity has always kind of had a purpose behind it. What What do you think about, if I were to ask you that question, wouldn't you like to be creative just for the sake of being creative and not having to deliver a message or, or sell a product? Um, is that something that you dream of? Good question. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to answer that. We'll find out in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's something, I guess I would, I, I would always say I was creative. I, you know, I think, I think there's um, always stories going on in my head. And some of them are not what I would call uh, kid stories, but you know, it's, it's, uh, as I told my friends, well, you know, I live in a constant fantasy land. So, you know, I don't know to go need to go see uh, fantasy movies because I, I got my own. Um, but at some point, you know, you have to figure out, well, is there some value to what I'm thinking about? Is there a value to this story? And like I said, this one started 15 years ago, and I decided to save the the initial story because I thought there was value to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mostly, well, there's there's a lot of 
the aspect of, well, I can just purge this idea. I can finally get out of my head. Um, and there's value in that. Um, but also, again, it's that sense of how can I do something to uh, tickle an imagination of a young child or get them to think about uh, beyond the, you know, their front door. Um, and I think that's that's so valuable. And, you know, certainly more than when I was a kid, the uh, travel opportunities are immense. Um and there's so much they can learn. Just, you know, I, I would also say just going on their computer and or looking at some sort of a, a nature show. Um, that's learning, too, about animals. Um, so and, and that's part of what um, inspired me, too. I wish I could get uh, what's his name? Richard Attenborough is the guy who does all the uh, nature shows. Uh -huh. if, if he could promote my book. But <clears throat> anyway, um <laughs> You know, I've, I've always been a, I've always felt like travel builds the tapestry of our lives. Uh -huh. You know, you, you go somewhere and there's a, there's something that you come back with that's more valuable than, than when you left. And again, it's, this is my very juvenile way <laughs> of telling people that's what I believe. Well, I certainly support that. I think that traveling and um, and and we happen to live in a country that is so diverse and so big. Um, back in the fall of 22, I had an epic cross-continent adventure where I drove myself, um, kind of zigzagged ac across the country and back and, and drove through Iowa, which was fun. Uh -huh. I, I think I was asleep for most of it, to be honest. What? <laughs> What? All right. That was at the end of the. It was at the end of the hey, trip. I. Re, I hey, Iowa, Iowa makes Nebraska look like uh, you know. <laughs> I won't go in there. I have Nebraska friends. Well, the, the reason I mention that is because I have a, a, fr a friend uh, who lives in Davenport, and he asked, he goes, did yeah. you drive through Davenport? And I said, I don't remember. I was on I-whatever. And he goes, yeah, you drove through Davenport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. You do. So, so. And, and you drive. If you're on I-80, you drove right past Iowa City, uh -huh. which is home of the writer's workshop. So there's a lot of famous writers that have come out of that. Um, so... Um, yeah, there's there's a there's a strong writing community in this area, and that's really fantastic. And and as we were saying before, just traveling is such a you know a, a wonderful gift to give to our kids because right. even within our own uh, within the United States, when we're traveling. We are in the same country, but the cultures are very different in the different parts of the country. And then, you know, getting to travel outside of the country to a place where people are speaking a different language and have a very different culture and different mm -hmm. foods and different um, uh, geography and nature. Uh, I think that that is such a gift to uh, to give to kids and um and even if it's not, if we're not able to actually get up and get on a plane and um, fly to different parts of the world, we do have the power to sit down on on the couch with our kids and pick up a book and travel via right. the book to all these different um, places. Some of them right. imaginary. Right. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. Last year before Christmas, I decided I have six grandchildren from ages from kindergarten to. Uh, sophomore in high school. And I said, you know, what am I going to give them all for Christmas? And I decided they don't need anything more. So we uh, planned a trip together. We all went to the Dominican Republic um, for a week in January, and they just loved it. I mean, they say, you know, they've got such incredible memories of, as you say, being around different cultures, different languages, eating different food. I mean, that it's just, you know, it opens the door, I think, to acceptance of different cultures and understanding that, you know, just our little neighborhood is, is not the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to ask you a, a little bit about your um, your past career where you were creating and you were your, using your imagination to create <laughs> messages um, to sell something, to sell a message, sell a product, sell a service. Right. 
And, you know, we've talked here on the podcast a little bit about how, you know, challenging it can be. In a picture book, you need to deliver a whole story in 600 words with some illustrations. And you have in a, in a middle grade novel many more words and then, a you know, an adult novel, you know, 50, 70, 80,000 words, whatever. As a uh, creative in advertising, you need to deliver a message in 30 to 60 seconds. Right. W- talk a little bit about that and how challenging that is and and what we need to do to kind of um, – and, and what value it can be for a, a writer to kind of practice delivering a message in such a short period of time. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you've hit on a good a good thought. Um, working for 40 plus years in, in the advertising industry, I, I had countless client meetings uh, that would last for hours and <laughs> we'd get uh, pages and pages of input. We'd tour their facilities. We'd listen to various people from presidents to engineers to whatever it might be. Lots of uh, medical advertising too. And our, pre- our focus always was to boil it down to what was the most salient elements that would make someone interested. Um, you know, uh, it, it, that was the hard part. And getting the client to say, you know, you come in with a presentation and you'd say, here's our point of difference. Here's the high ground benefit. And they go, well, we got to say this too. And we have to say this too. And we have, and, and I'm like, your viewer, your listener is already shut down. They, mm-hmm. they don't care. So that translated for me into simplifying my messages in these books. And not a lot of words. Um, I couldn't write the 60,000 page or 60,000 word novel. That's for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, I wrote a lot, <laughs> a lot of uh, um, uh, rationales for clients uh, that sometimes are three or four pages long, but in yeah. the very end, those were all meant to validate this simple concept we were trying to uh, get across to them. And it was hard for for clients sometimes, you know, because they felt like they had 20 benefits and we tried to get them down to one or two. Right. Right. Yeah. It it is. It's so challenging. Do you think that nowadays, now in the in the age of TikTok, where in Instagram, where kids are, and and kids and adults are consuming media that is no longer than thirty to sixty seconds long, and um, and this isn't this isn't just the commercials, you know, in the middle of a thirty minute or an hour long show. Everything that they're watching is 30 seconds long, 45 seconds long. Right. Uh, right. How do you think that that might, um, might affect storytelling as we go forward? Well, you know, I, I think it, it, that would depend, and I can only just project my thoughts on that in terms of if you've got a longer story, a good story, if it's interesting, if you are continuing to engage the reader constantly, um, you can get away with that. I, and I will say, kind of backing up to my career, um, I, I, and I've been out of the business for five years now, I would say that pretty much a lot of the work that we did uh, it would be dead now. I mean... 60-second commercials, 30-second commercials. Now it's all about putting together a uh, uh, great website that engages the uh, the audience and having a continual social media presence. Um, again, providing valuable input, not just getting out there for being out there's sake. Um, so, yeah, I you know, I... I, I look at things like even there have been times when I've picked up one of my or some of my grandkids from from school and instead of engaging in conversation, they'll flip open their phone, mm-hmm. you know, and they're sitting and looking at it. And, you know, that's why I I think, as I think I said in my little in, in what I wrote earlier to this <clears throat> about this interview was that's why I think reading to kids with family is so important. Put mm-hmm. your phones away, you know, um, 
part of what I, the concern I have in in i in you know iPods, iPads, whatever it is, is that it makes your brain lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, you're allowing someone else to provide all the creativity, and all you're doing is you're just the observer. Um, <clears throat> you know, and you know, I, I think it's just so critical um, to engage kids' brains early on. Um, and get them thinking, how can, and, cause I think it provides value to them in terms of, you know, hey, I did this, mm-hmm. whether it's creativity in a written form, mm-hmm. visual form. Um, so again, that's, that's what inspired me in, in the long run to uh, write this in my previous book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I love that, uh, that, uh, where do animals go on vacation? It really, um, invites families to be creative to get into those conversations with right. with their kids and uh now that you're you know you've this is the second chapter or maybe the third or fourth chapter in your life but <laughs> it's a new chapter in your life and and uh how how is it um uh shaping up comparing to you the, the, being in advertising for all those years are you loving this even more yeah you know and and I I think back to the the times as I said before you know gathering all information all the information writing rationales making presentations in the very end you were always suspect to what the client liked mm-hmm. whether whether they <clears throat> liked what you did or not um, and sometimes you had to go back two or three times in this case I am I am not only the writer and illustrator i'm also the client mm-hmm. and so i am the final say on what makes it into the book and that i have found extremely freeing it's it's there's a lot of freedom in that it's a little scary um but by the same token in both books i've written i've always asked um people that i know who are in education uh, elementary education to read the book make some adjustments tell me if i've used words that are too large or if it's maybe too obscure for them. And they've always come back with good ideas. I've been pretty close most of the time, but sometimes I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's a word they probably wouldn't know in third grade. So um, that has been, like I said, extremely freeing. And then I'm able to to, uh, play all the roles. That's great. I love that. I love that. Hey, Steve, where can people go to find out more about where do animals go on vacation and also find out a little bit more about you? Well, I have a website. Um, it's a difficult one to remember. It's steveaerickson.com, and uh, they can go on the site, um, see the book. There's links to um, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, and it also has a, uh, a little bit of a preview of one of the pages if they want to see that, get a sense of uh, uh, my visual approach and, and, and text. And there's also a uh, link or a, a, an example of uh, from my pr- previous book, too, um, about um, um, the mystery inside a refrigerator. So um, I will say one thing, too, while I've got you here, is that when we talk about reading for kids, I have done a couple of readings, again, in my previous book, and I've got more set up for this one with retirement communities. Ah. They absolutely love it, you know, and, and, oh man, that's, that's so much fun. And, and, and it also, um, in both cases, uh, they're like, I need to get one of these for my grandson, or I need to get one for my uh, great grandchild. I <clears throat> read to a woman a hundred who was a hundred years old and she was sharp as a tack. And I think she bought three for her great grandchildren. So, uh, and that's, I, I don't go into it with a sense of how can I sell these people? Uh-huh. It's to engage and entertain them. And I think that's, that's one of the best. It, it's something that I didn't anticipate when I started writing, how much I would, I would enjoy reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's... and I've read the books to my grandchildren and they love it. Wonderful. And what a great, um, and, and it figures a guy that was in advertising for all those years, um, either thinks about or stumbles upon an idea of where you can uh, go to a market that most people don't think of in terms of selling kids' books and um, 
not only sell some books, but also bring a lot of joy and happiness to people right. who can use it. Right. right. Yeah. That's that's my largest value proposition. You know, maybe some authors get into it with the idea of, you know, I'm going to be the next Stephen King or whomever, but I never did. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it's I've sold quite a few books and, and that is in itself rewarding. That's wonderful. Well, we've had a great time speaking to the author of Where Do Animals Go on Vacation? Our guest has been Steve Erickson. Hey, Steve, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Have a great day in Boston. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast and will join us for the next exciting episode of the show. We are so grateful that you're part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. We'd love for you to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at reading with your kids on Instagram, at Jedly Magic on Twitter. If you are on LinkedIn, please connect with Jed Doherty. We also have a Reading With Your Kids page on LinkedIn. We would love for you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Authors, click on the Authors Click Hit button to find out how you can be a guest here on the show and find out how we can help you celebrate your book with the world. And also, parents, please be sure to visit readingwithyourkids.com to download our free online magazine. Hey, we want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to start by thanking our amazing guests. I also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Chris Doherty, Ann O'Leary, Soji Franklin. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of The Reading With Your Kids Podcast.